Russell's retirement at the conclusion of the 1969 season would signify the end of the Celtic era. Now, a different kind of team would step forward. One not built around a dominant player, but rather a shared philosophy. Everyone was mature enough to recognize that none of us would be as strong individually as all of us were together. Playing unselfishly was the foundation of their success. Following the guidelines of their coach, William Red Holtzman, they adhere to an egalitarian system whose principles were straightforward. The open man philosophy, hitting the open man, not looking at who's in the uniform, but when you see a white shirt open, get the ball to that man. It was a style of play that was ideally suited for the sharpshooting Knicks. I think we had one of the most unique teams in NBA history because all five players were good perimeter shooters. You usually don't find that on a team. With their big men, as dangerous from long range as their guards, the Knicks stretched defenses to the breaking point and were impossible to stop with the game on the line. Any player on our team would be willing to take the last second shot. You see some players on some teams, there will only be one or two players who would be willing to take the last second shot because all the burden is on your shoulders, right? They don't want the ball. Throw it, get it away from me. You know, it's like it's hot. Don't, don't. They threw, throw it and throw it back. But on our team, everyone was able and did from time to time take that last second shot. The concept of shared responsibility was also the foundation of the Knicks defense. Everything was involved around team defense, not a man defense. When a guy scored, he scored against a team, not an individual. What we try to do is take a team that they had a weakness, try to exploit it. If a guy would not pass the basketball, if a guy took the basketball and he turned his back and things like that. So we would try to go and trap the basketball on him and, and do those kinds of things. But for the Knicks, defense was more than just a science. It was a passion, and it would become their rallying cry. When they started to chant the defense, defense, I felt that I would do something to steal the ball. I was that psyched up that I could make it happen. Certain nights, I thought we would fall downstairs in the garden. This place was rocking, so everyone would be jumping and stomping and making noise. I can recall a time late in the third quarter, we were out of the game at starting five because we had such a tremendous lead. And all of that was predicated on defense. The Knicks were a team in perfect sync as they cruised to the league's best record, advancing through the playoffs as expected. They made their way towards a climactic finals battle with the awesomely talented Lakers. The unstoppable Will Chamberlain, the spectacular Elgin Baylor, and the deadly Jerry West. These three legendary superstars would issue the ultimate challenge to the Nick team concept. With league MVP Willis Reed and the mammoth Chamberlain battling to a standstill, the teams would split the first four games. But in the pivotal fifth game, the delicately balanced Knicks were thrown suddenly into chaos. Play, and Willis is hurt. I was thinking, well, there goes the championship. Willis was the backbone of the team, and without him, I didn't see any way that we could contain Chamberlain. Well, Nick, under any ordinary circumstances, not considered a big basketball team. And right now, they are a very small basketball team with six foot six and a half Dave the Busher at center against seven foot one Will Chamberlain. All I tried to do was just stay between him and the basket and hope that, uh, uh, you know, we'd get help from from somebody on the side or out front, because there's nothing you can do with Wilt one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But one-on-one -on -one was not how these Knicks played. They would defend Chamberlain as a team, confusing him and rattling the stunned Lakers. Defense! Defense! Right of the round, it's loose, taken by Garrett of the Lakers. He bullets one down, put that escape is accepted by the Busher. Fast break for the next of a drop of drive. Leads for it and driving shot is good. Incredible defense by the Knicks. Garrett loses to Frazier. He's ahead of the field. He's down the lane. Scoops and hit. The Knicks would beat the Lakers that night, defying logic with a stubborn belief in each other. 
and though they would lose game six in L.A., as Reed watched from the bench in street clothes. In the decisive seventh game, they would once again find strength in each other. When the team left the locker room, nobody had come out. The big question is, will Willis Reed play tonight? There is tremendous doubt right now. There he is, he appeared. Oh, here comes Willis. And... He hits his first two shots. And outside Reed jumps from 20. Yes. Willis has hit on his first two. And that tells us all, we can do this. And we did. West across the net, but loses the Frazier, drives ahead of the field. Though Willis would not score again, he would not need to. He had inspired his teammates, and they would do the rest. Frazier, top of the key, outside the busher, in the corner, Frazier. He drives to Barnett for a jump. Yes! You know, at different points in time, there were always somebody to step forward or to say the right thing, to do the right thing. I mean, that's, I think that's the kind of team he was.